quadratic equations, what can we use these for? Well, answering actual questions. So we're given a problem about the number of bacteria based on the degree Celsius. So let's first of all think about the input and output. Our input would be the temp measured in degrees Celsius, and our output is going to be the number of bacteria. The first question asks, what is the number of bacteria when the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius? So should we plug in, should we use the y-intercept, find the zeros, or do we need the vertex? Hmm, well they're giving me an input of 10, input. So all I have to do is plug in. Let's use correct notation. So n of t, because 10 is t, equals 20 times 10 squared minus 20 times 10 plus 120. So even though we might be tempted to use a calculator here, let's really work on our numeric skills when possible. So 10 squared is 100, 100 times 20 is 2000. Minus 200 plus 120. always nice to give the answer in context of the question, including when it occurs. Next we're asked, at what temperature will the number of bacteria be minimal? What's the key word that I probably want to pick up on? Well, I think that word minimal indicates something about the parabola. It's an x squared, so I know it's a parabola. When did we find the minimum? We found the minimum from the vertex. So that's what I need to find. We're given the equation in standard form. In order to find the location of the min or max, I need the x-axis. So from standard form, remember x equals negative b over 2a. So t is 1 half, and remember what our input is. 1 half t is 1 half degrees Celsius. Then it asks how many. Well, in order to get how many, what do I need to do? Plug it in, plug it in. We're still working with the vertex, but I need to now plug in that 1 half degree Celsius into the equation and find out the number of bacteria at a minimum. Remember, let's give it some context. At t equals 1 half degrees Celsius, there will be a minimum of 115 bacteria present. The height in feet of an object is given by this quadratic in example two. T stands for time in seconds, so that's my input, and H stands for my height, so that's my output. So the first question asks, what is the initial height of the object? And when does it occur? Okay, well, at zero seconds, the ball is right there on my graph. So where is that in my equation? The y-intercept, right? So I'm really just looking for the y-intercept here. Wah, right there. Y-intercept is 0, 190. So the ball is 190 feet above the ground at zero seconds. So remember, answering in context, the initial height of the object is 190 feet at t equals zero seconds. Okay, so initial height's kind of a buzzword for y-intercept. Let's try another one. What is the height of the object after one second? Okay, so one second, so that's time. So that's my input. So all I'm doing is gonna input one second to get my output, the height. So what am I gonna do here? Plug in. So remember to answer in context. After one second, the object is 238 feet above the ground. Find the maximum height of the object, and when does that occur? Okay, well, Mrs. Peer talked about this maximum. What does that make us think of? Vertex, right? So this maximum is kind of a buzzword for looking for the vertex. So I wanna find the vertex, and that's gonna give me the max height, and it'll give me the time that that occurs. Vertex from standard form, t equals negative v divided by 2a. Okay, so if I get a vertex of 2, 254, which one's the maximum value and which one's the time? T, the input, that's gonna be my time value, and then the output, that's my height. So I'm gonna give my maximum height at T equals two seconds. So maximum height of the object is 254 feet, occurring at T equals two seconds. Okay, last question about this example. When does the object hit the ground? Okay, this might help to look at visually. Okay, I have my object starting at 190 feet up here, 
flying up and then plummeting back down to the ground. Okay, so where do you think the ground is right there? Right here, right? What do we call those values? The x-intercepts, what else do we call those values? Solutions, roots, zeros. So this means this time I'm gonna look for the zeros. How do I find those? I have a quadratic equation. Well, if I can set it equal to zero and factor it, then I can use zero product property to find my x-intercepts, my roots, my solutions, my zeros. So let's try that. Oh man, this one's not factorable. So what could I try here? I could try to complete the square, but I don't have any value of one, so quadratic formula might be my best bet. So let's use the quadratic formula and find our two solutions. All right, I didn't get very pretty values, but that's okay. Since we're in context here and we're trying to give time in seconds, I don't wanna leave a radical or a square root in my final answer. So I did go ahead and plug these into my calculator and get approximated values. Anytime we're approximating, always take it out to at least three decimal place. <laughs> so the thousandth place. So I got T equals negative 1.984 and I got T equals 5.984. Okay, so which of those values makes sense for time? The positive one, right? So the object hits the ground at about six seconds or 5.984. The length of a rectangle is three more than twice the width. Wow, at first read, what are we doing here? Quadratics? All right, let's take a closer look. I have my rectangle and the length is described in terms of the width. So I'm going to mark the width as W, but then the length is, is equals three more than, more than add, twice the width, so two times W. All right, good thing, because I don't wanna have two different variables that I'm working with. And then it describes the area. It says, determine the dimensions that will give a total area. What's the area of a rectangle? Length times width, but I don't wanna have area equals L times W. Good thing I can substitute the value for L. Notice I use commutative property of multiplication. Now I'll go ahead and distribute. So I have an area equation that is a quadratic, 2w squared plus 3w. I want the dimensions when the area is 27 square meters. Square meters tells me that the 27 is the area, so I'm going to substitute 27 for a. So the only thing that seems reasonable at this point is to go ahead and solve for the zeros. So I'm going to subtract the 27 and see if I can factor it. Woo, we lucked out. This one factors. Now zero product property and solve for the two values of W. The two values are negative nine halves and three. But think about it, we're talking about the length of the side of a rectangle. A negative value makes no sense. So the answer must be W equals three. Did we answer the question? No, we haven't answered it fully because it asks for the dimensions and I only have the width. Well, now that I know W is three, let's go back to our equation for L and substitute that value. When the area is 27 square meters, the dimensions are three meters by nine meters. Now you might be tempted on this problem to say, I could have just guessed and checked that. But remember, that's not the purpose of this. So what happens when we have a problem? Much more likely that isn't such a perfect number. So let's make sure we're learning the math. The number of horsepower needed to overcome a wind drag on a certain automobile is given by this quadratic where S is the speed. So S is our input value and the number of horsepower to overcome the wind drag is our output. All right, so let's see what this first problem is asking us for. It says how much horsepower is needed to overcome the wind drag if the car is traveling 50 miles per hour? Okay, so what am I looking for here? Am I looking to plug in? Am I looking for the vertex? Am I looking for um, zeros? Or am I looking for the y-intercept? Think about it. I wanna figure out the horsepower for when the speed is 50 miles per hour. Well, speed is my input value. So if I'm inputting something, that's gonna be plug in, plug in. Go for it.
So when I input the speed of 50 miles per hour, I get an output of 12.819 horsepower. So 12.819 horsepower is needed to overcome a wind drag for a car going 50 miles per hour. The next one asks us at what speed the car will need to use 200 horsepower to overcome the wind drag. Hmm, wait a minute, 200 horsepower? Horsepower is my output. So now I have this quadratic with an input of speed and I want the output to be 200. So let's set our quadratic equation equal to 200 because that's our output. They're asking for what speed. So that means I want to know what S is. So how am I going to solve this quadratic equation? Well, I got to set it equal to zero and then I can try to factor or use the quadratic formula to solve. So give it a go. See if you can figure out what speed I need. Looks like it doesn't factor, which is not a surprise, so I'm using the quadratic formula now. Be really careful as you type in these values. So it looks like the car will need to be going about 199 miles per hour to use 200 horsepower to overcome the wind drag.